Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about facts about alcohol poisoning. Uh, this is a very good informational video. Uh, but first, as usual, I just want to shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at Starting Point. His phone number is 844-414-8444. What Dr. Luis Gonzalez does at Starting Point is two of two things. You can either have him, like me, walk you from your addiction to your recover daily, 24 hours at a time, and we never ever talk about the past. On the other side of Dr. Luis Gonzalez's business, he can help you become a addiction recovery coach like I am and like he is. If you uh, possess pers uh, passion, professionalism, and personality, and you have some sort of addiction background, whether it was your own that you're battling with or a loved one, that would be uh, uh, certainly a thing that you might want to look into at Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444. His website is www.startingpointmn.com. That's S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez at startingpoint.com. Folks, my websites are www.clearviews.info and www.clearreform.com. Now, clearviews.info, what is that all about? It is about information on addiction and information on recovery. It is <clears throat> about uh, 10 pages on the website itself. Uh, page number 7 has all 50 states uh, when you click on the state that you live in, you will find re rehab and treatment centers, hopefully within your area. If not, go to Google in the search bar, just type in treatment, rehab and treatment centers and put your area in, and you will locate it that way. On all my pages, you will find videos and informational items such as how to battle addictions, what are the signs of alcoholism, how to tell if somebody is doing the drugs, uh, doing drugs themselves. These are all on my pages on my website. Most everything that's clinically involved comes from either doctors, uh, psychiatrists, or psychologists. They are the ones that dispense the information, whether it's via Mayo Clinic, the CDC, uh, the Fix, which is a uh, magazine. They dispense all that information to all of them, and I merely post it on my website for your informational purposes only. What I do have that I create myself are these daily videos. Those you will find on my uh, website at www.clearviews.info. On my other website on www.clearreform.com, that is similar to what Dr. Uh, uh, Luis Gonzalez is, uh, does on his second part of his website or his business and that is I will walk with you from your addiction to your recovery daily 24 hours a time and I will also never talk about your past we concentrate on today and how to make your uh, days better tomorrow I will help you take your life back Dr. Luis Gonzalez will help you take your life back but you need to contact me at 844-405-HELP and if you want to text me, 631-599-0218, you can go to either one of my uh, websites, leave a comment. You can also email me at clearreform at yahoo. That's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M. If you notice, both my websites start with the word CLEAR. And what CLEAR stands for is Community Lessons in Power Addiction Recovery. We, that's you and me, and the rest of the community, all our lessons with drugs and alcohol empower addiction recovery. Our lessons help other people with their addiction recovery. Folks, I have been contacted. It was a really uh, special week this week. I've been contacted by a daily talk show uh, about uh, going on there in the future, uh, uh, speaking about my ways of uh, battling addiction. Uh, they saw my videos and uh, they, they thought it was interesting in how I approach my recovery. I've also been approached by a news agency about my video. So the word is getting out there and with your help on Facebook, I posted today uh, asking you folks to give me ideas. I am up to 129 videos. Today makes the 130th. I need to have your ideas. What interests you about substance abuse? What do you think I should talk about on my next videos? 
I will take your topics to heart and I will make sure that each and every one will uh, happen unless I've already spoken about it but I can always redo an original video with a new idea uh, or an idea that I can amend so folks post your ideas uh, on Facebook um, I posted uh, I believe it was four separate pages asking for your ideas you can also text me with your ideas at 631-599-0218 and I'm asking for you folks no matter where you are whether it's here in the States or globally go ahead and text me or email me let me know what you want me to do because I will make sure that we will cover each and every topic that is requested and I'll tell you why because it helps the war on addiction it helps the war on substance abuse and it helps me and it helps you now don't forget tomorrow is Sunday again I'll be pounding the streets in Mastic Beach Long Island New York going to the uh, uh, original grounds where I used to do most of my drinking I will go out there and I will talk to the everyday people that have substance abuse issues remember last week I did some uh, interviews and they were quite interesting so I will do this again tomorrow as I will do for not just tomorrow but eight more Sundays after that I will provide to anyone that wants an hour's worth of free uh, recovery coaching that is addiction recovery coaching or life coaching itself life coaching issues that deal with how to be a good role model what makes a well-balanced human what do we need to do to to uh, educate our children about substance abuse those are issues that I will discuss and I will offer one hour free to whoever uh, wants it uh, as I'm walking the streets of Mastic Beach, Long Island, New York, I'm, um, and uh, I will be doing that. Now, I'm taping this a day uh, prior to Monday because this will be uh, airing on Monday. So when I say tomorrow, because I'm taping this actually Saturday today, uh, because Monday I'll be busy at work doing something. So uh, I'm pre taping this. So when you are watching this, I've already done exactly what I said I was going to do tomorrow, which was walk the streets. And you will hear some of those interviews, and hopefully you will hear them by Tuesday. And they are on, depending on how many I do. So, folks, let's dive right into facts about alcohol poisoning. Let me tell you, from experience, I could have died at least three, four times from alcohol po poisoning slash overdose. So let's talk about it. Did you know one drink is defined as a 12 ounce glass a four ounce glass uh, excuse me one drink is defined as a 12 ounce beer a four ounce glass of wine or a 10 ounce wine cooler or one and a half ounces of 80 proof alcohol now think about it one and a half ounces now i used to drink 10 to 15 of those one and a half ounces and here i am today sitting before you with the grace of God still alive because he protected me and we're going to talk about why he protected me we're going to talk about why he wants to protect you alcohol is a psychoactive drug that changes brain chemistry and that is so true you know some people might differ with my opinion on this but I always say when people are intoxicated or high when they say things to you when they do things it's not them if they're doing or saying things out of norm it's the addiction doing the talking and the reaction sure it's coming out of your loved one's mouth and sure it's the body language that you see however it's the addiction controlling that if your loved one usually doesn't talk bad when they're sober and usually is a nice person when they're sober obviously it's the addiction doing that doesn't justify it but I'm just giving the point Alcohol is a le is lethal in high doses. Alcohol is the most consumed drug in the world. The most consumed drug. And people don't realize that alcohol is a drug. Deaths from alcohol overdoses occur about as often de uh, as deaths from other drugs. So even it, it is being used more than any other drug, but it's not as lethal as some other drugs could be, depending on quantities. However, alcohol... Uh, what increases the death rate on alcohol is not just the overdoses, but when people drink, they go behind the wheel and they not only possibly kill themselves, but they kill innocent people. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant that can turn off vital brain areas, resulting first in coma and then in death. Now, if you're writing this down, we're going to recap this later again. Poison control cells in the brain 
detect danger. Too much alcohol. There's a too much alcohol. Red flashing in the head. A signal is then sent to your stomach to vomit. Thank God our Lord created a uh, what I like to call backwash system that if over consumed alcohol or any type of poison that God created a stomach to backwash what is going into our uh, stomach so bad but uh, folks if you consume it at a rapid pace and your stomach can't react quick enough it will kill possibly you or your loved one it takes 30 to 90 minutes after you stop drinking before each uh, before you reach your highest level of intoxication and that is true because when I used to drink 10 to 15 shots, I wouldn't feel anything but possibly a little dizzy. But talk to me about an hour or two, or you couldn't even talk to me, or I couldn't respond to you. It's a couple of reasons. A, I couldn't even talk. I was slurring my words, and possibly I was passed out. These are symptoms of overdose reactions. Cold, clammy, pale, or blushed skin. Vomiting. Passing out. Difficult to stay awake. Slow, shallow breathing, eight breaths a minute or less. That is the heart slowing down, and with too much uh, alcohol, that heart will stop. Guarantee you, folks. Pay attention to these signs. Pay attention to what is alcohol and how many ounces. The symptoms of overdose reaction, the passing out of, from alcohol and toxin could lead to death in two ways. We're going to talk about that next what to do when somebody is intoxicated, what not to do. Passing out from alcohol intoxication could lead to death in two ways. Number one, you may fall into a deep sleep, vomit, and choke because you are too intoxicated to wake up. It's almost like the drowning syndrome. You fall asleep and never wake up because the alcohol concentration in your brain is so high that your life functions are so depressed that they stop functioning totally. It's depressing to have to read this, but these are the facts, ma'am. As the good old detective Sergeant Joe used to say, what to do when someone is intoxicated? Continue monitor the person. What? Let me let me just say this. When you have a loved one or you have someone in your close circle that you notice that drinks all the time, and after a while you're saying to yourself, "I am tired." trying to help this person I'm tired of trying to preach to this person I just want to ask you please never ever give up on this person and there's one reason I want you to do that is because God has never given up on you you'll never be God I'll never be God but let's take 10% of what God does for human mankind and give it to our fellow humans never ever give up no matter what it takes for you is to keep continuously fighting for your loved one or your uh, friends in your inner circle. Check their breathing, waking them often to make sure that they are not unconscious. Because what, what's happening is if you wake them up, their brain cells and body functions are being awakened. They're not going into possibly a deep coma. If they fall asleep, place the intoxicated person on their back. Raise the person's arm closest to you to you straight above their head, straighten the leg closest to you. Bend the other leg at the knee and bring the other arm across the chest. Let's read that really slow because this is important. If, the, if they fall asleep, place the intoxic pers intoxicated person on their back. Raise the person's arm closest to you, straight over their head. Straighten the leg closest to you. Bend the other leg at the knee and bring the other arm across the chest. Gently roll the person towards you. Guard the head. Tilt the head to maintain airways. Tuck nearest hand under the cheek to help maintain head tilt. If they do not respond, you need to call 911. Again, we'll read this in a little while and we're going to recap. The only thing that can sober an intoxic person is time. Only a sober adult should be responsible for the well-being of a drunk person. You, of course, that you, you really can't have your child uh, take care of a drunk person, nor should you want to because that certainly would send a bad message of, uh, especially let's say if it's your husband or your wife, 
uh, that would send a message about the role model uh, appearance that your child has towards your, your husband or your wife. And, and we're going to talk about the role model. Do not exercise the person. Allow the person to drive a car or ride a bike. Give the person food, liquid, medicine, or drugs to sober them up. Give the person a cold shower. The shock of cold could cause unconsciousness. Let the person who has been drinking heavily sleep it off. Do not do any of these. And let's repeat. Do not exercise the person. Do not allow the person to drive a car or ride a bike. Do not give the person food, liquid, medicines, drugs to sober them up. Do not give the person a cold shower. Take the shock. Uh, the shock of the cold shower could have them slip into unconsciousness. And do not let the person who has been drinking heavily sleep it off. Don't say, I'll oh, just sleep it off, because that can go into possibly unconsciousness or a coma. Let's recap, and then at the end of the show, we're going to recap one more time. Did you know one drink is defined as a 12-ounce beer, a 4-ounce glass of wine, a 10-ounce wine cooler, or a one and a half ounce shot of 80 proof alcohol. Did you know alcohol is a psychoactive drug that changes brain chemistry? Did you know that alcohol in, in, uh, is lethal in high doses? Did you know that? Did you know that deaths from alcohol overdoses occur often as often as deaths from any other drug? Did you also know that alcohol's central nervous system depressant that can turn off vital brain areas resulting first in coma and then in death? Did you also know it takes 30 to 90 minutes after you stop drinking before you reach your highest level in intoxication? 30, to, that's in 30 minutes to an hour and a half. These are symptoms of overdose reaction. They can be cold signs, clammy, pale, or blushed skin. They could be some vomiting going on. Vomiting, I will tell you, is, is actually a good thing because a lot of what is, went in one end is coming out the same end. Passing out, difficult to awake or uh, to stay awake. Slow, shallow breathing maybe eight breaths in a minute or less. Those are signs of the body shutting down. Passing out from alcohol intoxication could lead to death in these two ways. Number one, they may fall asleep into a deep sleep, vomit, and choke because they are too intoxicated to wake up. Number two, they will fall asleep and never wake up because alcohol concentration in their brain is so high that, your, that their life functions are so depressed that they will automatically just stop. What do you do when somebody is intoxicated in your family or in your inner circle? You need to continuously monitor this person and you need to never give up on this person. God didn't give up on you. He will never give up on you. So don't you dare, dare give up on somebody. They have a problem not by their own choice but by a disease called alcoholism. It is you as the sober loved one to take care of this person because very easily this disease could have overtaken you. It's not by the person's choice even though you might think that this person makes a choice to drink but it's not by their own choice. It's, it's, it's a function, a brain that's telling this person it's the addiction that's telling this person to keep drinking. Remember, God gave us a brain called the cortex. And on the other side of that is from the Satan, the booze brain called the midbrain. It is the midbrain, the booze brain, and the Satan that wants to take this person's life. It is up to you as the sober adult to never ever give up. As much as you don't want God to give up on you. Check for their breathing. Waking them off and be sure they're not unconscious because when you do that, you're re-generating uh, uh, their, their functions. If they fall asleep, place the intoxicated person on their back. Raise the person's arm closest to you straight above the head 
straighten the leg out closest to you, then bend the other leg at the knee and bring the other arm across their chest. Gently roll the person towards you. Guard the head. Tilt the head to maintain airways. Tuck near his hand under the cheek to help maintain head tilt. If they do not respond, you need to call 911. The only thing that can sober an intoxicated person up is time. Only a sober adult should be responsible for the well-being of a drunk person. We do not want to show our youngsters what it looks like to be intoxicated or to be passed out because when we talk about which is next of being a role model these are things to avoid. Do never or do not ever exercise the person. Allow the person to drive a car or a bike. Give the person any food, liquid, medicines, or drugs to sober them up. Do not, and I repeat, do not give them a cold shower. That's a myth. The shock of the cold water could cause unconsciousness. And let the person who has been drinking heavily sleep it off. Do not let the person sleep it off. That's a myth. The people that have said, go sleep it off, and the people that have said, go take a cold shower, it's a myth. I'm telling you, these are do not things. Do not exercise the person. Do not allow the person to drive a car or a bike. Do, do not give the person food, liquid, medicines, drugs to sober them up. Do not give the person a cold shower and do not let the person sleep it off. Folks, I just want to apologize. My cat in the background is meowing at the door. Uh, he wants to go outside, so I apologize. So this, these are facts of alcohol poisoning. We're going to recap one more time at the end of this segment. But let's go back to uh, one of the things about the only thing that can sober and talk it is, is time. But here's the thing. Only s let a sober adult be responsible for the well-being of a drunk person. Because we don't want to have our youngsters around a situation like that. Because we, as parents, have to set a role model. We, as grandparents, we, as legal guardians, have to set a role model. And part of that role model is to do not to do four things. Number one is we should never, ever smoke in front of our children, in front of our grandchildren. If you need to smoke, go and do it somewhere else. Number two, we should never ever drink in front of our children and our grandchildren. I prefer no one drinks at all anymore, but in the, in, in, in the world that we live in, people still will, no matter how the fight of substance abuse is out there. So if you need to drink, do it away from your children, not in front of them. Number three is the profanity. Never, ever Use anything that's not in the Webster Dictionary in front of your children. Try never to raise the volume of your voice in a yelling matter. If you need to use profanity, go where it belongs and say all you want, and that is in the bathroom. Because that's where that foul mouth belongs, in the bathroom, not in front of your children or your grandchildren. And for some reason, you have a tendency of committing domestic abuse and hitting your spouse or a loved one. You don't need to go and do it somewhere else. What you do need to do is seek counseling or therapy. And if you're the victim listening, the victim of the daily beatings of your spouse or a loved one, you need to call the authorities and you cannot wait. It is simply easier to call the authorities, have the authorities handcuff your loved one, and hopefully they will seek help after their court date, then for someone to have to call the authorities to have you taken out in the body bag. That is irreversible once that happens. Seeking help for domestic abuse is something that your loved one can get. But if it got to a point where your loved one has killed or murdered you or someone you know, that is not fixable. Those are the four things that you cannot do as a role model. Four things that you should have in your home and you should be as a role model. You need to show love. You need to show compassion. You need to show respect. And you need to show that you are the best role model out in the world. 
because that's what it's all about. It's all about raising our youngsters to always have a better life than we have and to be better than we have been. And what better way than to utilize my analogy of the book of life? It starts at your birth and it ends at your death. And all those chapters in between, every chapter indicates one year that you've been alive. And the same for your children with their book of life. So you, as the parent, guardian, or legal, uh, or grandparent, need to help your children with the first 18 chapters of their life from birth until the age of 18. And those chapters should include love, should include compassion, should include respect, should include that you've always been a good role model. Those chapters, those first 18 chapters in your children's life should not include, I saw my parents drinking. I saw my parents smoking. I heard my parents using that trashy, filthy bathroom mouth. Or I have seen my mother and my father physically abusing someone in our household. Mold and groom your children from the ages zero to 18 with 18 great chapters in their book of life. At 18, they're going to go out and they're going to continue writing their book, uh, their chapters in their book of life. But know this, that if your first 18 chapters that you helped your children write, uh, write are good, well-balanced chapters, your children will be prepared to conquer anything that society throws at them. They will have a shield around them. But if you do the four things that I told you not to do, which is drinking, smoking, profanity, and domestic abuse, and you have been doing that in your household, and you've been a bad role model, your children will leave at the age of 18 and blend right into society, because that's what society is all about, folks. My book of life started in 1961, and my ending will be whenever the good Lord takes me. The first 17 years, my parents helped write my chapters in my book of life. Then at 17, I took over my own chapters and went into college, joined the Marine Corps in 81, in boot camp, became a uh, lay reader, a leader, I'm sorry, otherwise known as a lay reader because they're both the same. A lay reader and a lay leader are uh, assistants to the chaplain. Remember what I'm telling you now because back then in 1981, God set the wheels of motion for, my, for what I'm doing today. In, 90, in 1981, he set this emotion. A lay leader is a liaison between the chaplain and the recruit. The chaplain noticed, and probably so did God, that I've always been a motivator, I've always been a concerned person, and I've always been there to help lift somebody up. So in 81, I became a lay leader. I started writing my own chapters in my book two years prior to that, which included alcohol. Those chapters continue. 1983 shows up. God protects me and keeps me alive from sure certain death. Beirut, Lebanon, we had a bombing. 1983, we lost 241 Marines. Uh, also, we lost Navy and civilian personnel. I was injured. However, God kept me alive for a reason. Let's fast forward now. The continuous chapters are being written by me. That always included alcohol, but every chapter as I got older included more alcohol. We fast forward to 2009. Once again, God protected me from sure certain death. Had an accident in Alaska, which took three years of physical therapy and workman's comp. But God protected me because he had a bigger plan. During those three years of being home not working, my alcohol consumption became severely out of control to the tune of 10 to 15 shots of vodka a day, folks. God still let me write my own chapters. 2011, God tapped me on my shoulder and he said, let's try helping the elders and the handicapped folks. I created Master Peach Outreach 2011, which was to help just those people. Between my wife and I, we did help some people. However, the alcohol consumption always held me back from any goal to achieve. So God continuously let me write my own chapters. Then in 2013, June 22nd, I hit so far rock bottom that I was totally helpless with my own life. It is then when I reached up 
and I asked God for guidance and direction and I finally stopped denying that I was an alcoholic. It is then that God said, I don't need to protect you from certain death anymore because now I protected you from two guaranteed situations that you could have died due to accidents and I protected you from three overdose doses, possibly overdoses. Now, because you have hit rock bottom, this is God talking to me, now I can trust that you can continuously write your own chapters in your own book, but I have a plan for you, he said. This was June 22nd, 2013. So I started writing my own chapters and now they didn't include alcohol anymore. They did not include alcohol anymore. I created clearviews.info. I sat at work one day and I said, what is a good name for a website for me to come up with a battle plan of my addiction? So I said, well, clear, because I'm clear about how it can get destroy people and kill people. So I said, what can I come up with with the initials clear? Community Lessons in Power Addiction Recovery. Views is to see. So I said clear views and the info obviously is for information. So I created that website and I continuously fed it information to feed to you folks. Then out of nowhere, God sends me Dr. Luis Gonzalez from Starting Point at startingpointmn.com 844-414-8444. Mind you, Dr. Luis Gonzalez in Minnesota, I'm in the Hamptons, Long Island. So we connected and we spoke and I agreed to go through his uh, educational program to become an addiction coach. It is then that the wheels kept being set in motion from what God created in me in 1981 that was to help people, to help the recruits with the chaplain. Now, upon completion of Dr. Luis Gonzalez's educational program, I could be between addiction and recovery, again, to help people. I went through his educational program, took my final exam, passed, was certified by him as an addiction recovery coach. My father comes to visit me. Mind you, I never saw the connection from 81 to 2014. I never saw that connection. My father comes to visit, and I'm showing him some medals from my Marine Corps days, and there was this one little medal in a box clear box and we spoke about it and I said to my father my uh, my father this medal resembled something I did in the Marine Corps as a lay leader and that was to be a mediator between the recruit and the chaplain it is then that a bright light went on my head I finally connected 81 as a lay leader and 2014 as an addiction recovery coach what God's plans were in 81 to 2014 took 33 years to achieve 33 chapters of me right well 32 because I one year before 2014 is when I quit drinking 32 chapters that God let, let me write my own chapters in my book that included alcohol that steadily as each chapter came about became stronger and more heavily involved took that long but the connection came together. And this is what I'm telling you folks, that God works at his own pace, at his, with his own rules, and you just need to be patient. Sooner or later, it will all come together. It took from 1981 to 2014 for me to realize what God had planned for me. God could have very easily let me die four to five times easily but God had bigger plans. And here I sit before you humbly, testifying to you that there is no shame in admitting you have an alcohol or drug problem. For the folks that are thinking that people will look at you, they will look at you better when you admit it because they are now seeing that you're seeking help. They will look at you every time you're intoxicated or high and how you speak and how you act. But now that you have admitted, if you're willing to do that, people will look at you in a different way, and I guarantee you God will look at you in a different way. God loves you no matter which way you are, but God will love you tremendously more, if that's possible, when you admit you have a problem. 
there are two things you need to do to, to conquer the task of recovery. The first thing is to stop denying that you have a problem because denial will only cause, re, uh, if you don't, I mean, every time you do deny and you say, I'll quit drinking, then you start again in two weeks, that causes the relapses. But when you are at rock bottom, you will then do the number two that I asked you to do. There's two things. Denial has to stop. Number two would be to reach for your higher power. In my case, it is God. You need to rely on him for guidance and direction. You cannot be sober without your higher power. You can have higher power without sobriety. That, that God will love you even if you're a drunk or drug addict. But if you want to stay sober, you need to include your higher power. You really have to include him. So you need to do the two things. Once you're willing to do that, you can try AA, 12-step program to 90-90, which is 90 meetings in 90 days, and sponsors, and all sorts of structured programs. You can try my methods. You can text me at 631-599-0218 or email me at clearreform at yahoo, and I will go over my method completely with you. This is one-third of my method. It's to sit in front of the video camera and sit here humbly daily letting you know that I am not ashamed that I have a disease called alcoholism that I am here to fight for you because when I fight for you I fight for me I always say I out of the thousands that watch me if I can just get two people daily out of each video I have been successful I can tell you one person definitely will get something out of this and that is me every day this is my method of battling addiction folks this is my method and, and my methods have now exploded to a point where people are starting to realize that there are other ways of battling addiction other than AA. I'm not saying you don't have to use AA. You can use AA in conjunction with my methods. But what I am doing is making, making alcohol and or drug addiction recovery fun. I joke about doing my videos Jokes like I'll say to my wife, I'll text her and say, okay, uh, the little red light on air is going to be blinking in 10 minutes. Don't disturb me. That's pretty funny because I'm acting like I have a studio, although I do not. This is all done from home. But what I'm trying to say is that alcohol and or drug addiction can be fun. Try AA, try my methods. If you need to check into rehab center, if you need to have that 24-hour supervision, Try the 30, 60, day, 90 day programs. They take insurance and Medicaid and if you don't have either, contact your state and see what they offer or contact me and I will try to help you find a place that maybe will take you in for a couple days or 10 days or 30 days without insurance. But folks, two things, stop denying and reach for your higher power. Folks, at night we all go to bed and uh, we walk around the house with sneakers, slippers, or shoes, or whatever. And when we go to bed, we put our shoes, sneakers, shoes at the edge of our bed at night on the bottom on the floor. I'm asking you, please, to push those sneakers, those shoes, or those slippers under your bed halfway. And the reason I'm asking you to do that is so when you wake up in the morning and you want to put them back on, you need to drop to your knees to go and get them because they're under your bed. And while you're on your knees, just pray to your Heavenly Father and thank Him for letting you enjoy another day on this earth. Because for every breath you inhale, there's someone out there that has taken their last breath. For every time you blink your eye, there is someone out there that is closing their eyes for good. So why not, when you pick up, you get your slippers and your sneakers, you just thank your Heavenly Father for another day on this beautiful earth. And I say this all the time, and I need for people to start listening. We all need to start sharing our wealth or lack of wealth, whatever little we have, but we need to share it. If you have something that's extra in your home, give it to the church, give it to the thrift stores, give it to someone, but you need to start sharing. Give it to the neighbor, the older lady. How many times do we buy a loaf of bread and after a week we still have a loaf, half a loaf sitting on our counter that's already gone stale? Laugh, if you will, 
but I always say a half a loaf of bread is better than no bread at all. So if you just cut that loaf of bread in half and give it to your neighbor, you have just made somebody else's life happier. And you have prevented having to throw that half a loaf out. But my reason for this whole thing is, is that you came to this earth with nothing, zero. You're leaving this world with zero. So if you're under the assumption that by holding on to whatever you have and not sharing, that when you die, it will come with you, you're totally wrong. It won't. I don't think anybody has that assumption, but why is it that people aren't sharing? Because what's going to happen is your loved ones, unless you have a specified will, will be fighting over everything. So why not enjoy watching other people with your extras? I'm asking you on God's behalf to enjoy sharing, because sharing is caring. Give to the people in need. Give responsibly to the people in need. And the reason I say that, how many times have we walked out of 7-Eleven and somebody say, oh, do you have $2 for a cab ride? I will tell you, 9 out of 10 times, those people are utilizing it for drugs or alcohol. So give to people in need responsibly. What I do say to people when they say, we just want to get something to eat, can you give me a couple bucks? Because I worked in Manhattan, so I went through this daily at Penn Station. I would say, let me go and walk you over there and I'll buy you a slice of pizza or a hot dog. Give responsibly. And when you give, God will give you back 10 times the amount you gave whenever he decides to do that. Because karma exists and everything happens for a reason, folks. But if you personally feel that you want to sit on everything you have, Look up the word karma. Get the real definition. And then take a self inventory of yourself and inventory what you have at home and possibly start sharing. To all my friends and in, in the audience that have reached out to me, I hope everybody is well. Um, my friend all the way up north, uh, tomorrow is Sunday, so football season has already started. Go Seattle. For my friend in New Hampshire, I haven't heard from you in a while. I hope all is well. I hope the state has finally helped you with your loved one. To all my friends, uh, too many states to mention in the South and the West. I hope everybody is well. Continue watching my videos. If for anything that you will get out of this, it's the fact that addiction can be fought daily. Your addiction can be fun in recovery. It can be. Folks, when I interview my fellow citizens in Mastic Beach and I walk around, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy it for a lot of reasons. I enjoy it because I hear that there are real people out like me. There are real people out in my audience like me and you. We are not the only people that have drug and alcohol addiction issues. Millions throughout this globe have the issue. But if we all come together as a community and share our lessons, it will empower addiction recovery. Clear community lessons empower addiction recovery. If we all had the attitude of, I'm only going to worry about myself, this world eventually will fall apart. When you go out and you help another person, whether it being with addiction recovery messages, uh, whether it being with sharing, you build up your self-esteem knowing that you made a difference in somebody's life. When I spoke to this young lady last week in Mastic Beach, and I'm sure everybody's heard the interview, she started crying. Something maybe she hasn't been able to do. But it is our chatting together, sharing our stories of life, that let inner feelings come out for this person. And the person afterwards asked me if she can give me a hug. I made a difference in her life. Although it wasn't a difference with money or materialistic things. 
It was an emotional difference. It was a difference of somebody caring. Another person on Mastic Beach, in Mastic Beach on Neighborhood Road, said, If we just had a person like you once a week walk up and down the streets, handing out their phone number to people when they are alone, when they are at their last end of uh, drinking or drugging, and they need somebody to help them, that they can just make a phone call and speak to someone. I said, I'm that person. I will let anybody utilize the 844-405 help to call me and I will help them to my best ability. Folks, my wife and I had just left Neighborhood Road and I wasn't even halfway down William Floyd Parkway for the people that know where that is in Shirley when I received a phone call from a young lady who said, I need help. I need help. I have a drug problem. Walking the streets shows people that I am not ashamed of what I have which is alcohol addiction. That I'm willing to share my story and they're willing to share theirs. These videos are for one reason and one reason alone. Well, two reasons. One reason would be to help me to help you. The second reason is to show you that I am a face. I'm a real human that has real problems like you. To show you that I am not ashamed to go on video and be seen all over Facebook, all over Google, all over Twitter, Dogpile, Dig and Blog, I am not ashamed. I want to be the voice to help. I want to help you take your life back. I am still taking my life back. Addiction will never ever leave me, but what I have learned is how to fight it. And I want to share that with you. I want to show you that you can live with an addiction. And you can have fun with your recovery plan. All it is, is coming up with an action plan for your goal. And then when your action plan is in process and finished, you have achieved your goal. Action plan has to be for anything you do in life. My action plan for this video was to get the uh, facts about alcohol poisoning onto my laptop. To read the facts to you. What was my goal for this video? To send a message to you about the alcohol poisoning facts. So when I'm completed with my action plan, when I completed this, I have set my goal and I have achieved my goal. It is that simple. So folks, what you need to do is let today, September 27, 2014, be the first day of the rest of your life. Start writing your chapters in your book differently that will not include alcohol or drugs, but that will include your higher power, that will include good role leadership. It's that simple, folks. Let's recap on the facts about alcohol poisoning. You know, I just want to say this. Uh, recently, somebody uh, from a news agency called me and said that what they like most about it is that I get emotionally involved. And I really do, folks, and I apologize if I'm too emotionally involved, but I know what it's like to be at the lowest point in life. And I can imagine if you're sitting out there and watching this, how you're hesitating, not knowing should I do it or should I not? And I can only advise you on one thing. That if you reach for your higher power, you will succeed. Let me help you walk from your addiction to your recovery 24 hours a time. Just call me, 844-405-HELP. That's it. I will guide you in the best way I can. It's a free phone call, and I will give you my undivided attention for free and I will try to do whatever I can to help you but it starts at in your home so why do I get so emotionally involved because it's something that I'm speaking from your heart when I'm done saying what I am saying you'll see it's a whole different me because I have to read now but when I speak from my heart I get emotional I want only one thing from every for everyone and that is a alcohol-free and drug-free world 
I know realistically it's never going to happen, but with my help, possibly with other people's help too, we can all keep fighting and fighting. But I need you to help. And I need you to come up with a plan to help yourself. And I need you to call me if you need the help. 844-405-HELP. I will always continuously be in this passion, passionate about it and emotional. Because this is something I'm not reading. This is something that's coming straight from my heart into your home. Let's go over here. One drink is defined as 12 ounce beer, four ounce glass of wine, or 10 ounce wine cooler, or one and a half ounce of pure alcohol. I was drinking 10 to 15. Right towards the end of those chapters in my book of life that included alcohol. But yet God shielded me from certain death. Alcohol is a psychoactive drug and changes the brain chemistry. Alcohol is lethal in high doses. God protected me three times at least of overdose. Deaths from alcohol overdoses occur often as uh, more often than deaths occur from any other drug. Alcohol is the central nervous system depressant that can't, I mean, that can turn off vital brain areas resulting first in coma and then in death. Irreversible once that happens. Poison control cells, uh, poison control cells in the brain detect danger. Too much alcohol, a signal is then sent to your stomach to vomit. Thank God for the Lord for giving us that backwash syndrome in our stomachs that it recognizes that something that just came in this end needs to come out that same end again. It takes 30 to 90 minutes after you stop drinking before the highest level of intoxication, intoxication takes effect. These are the symptoms that you need to uh, uh, watch out for. Cold, clammy, pale, and blushed skin. Vomiting, passing out, difficult to stay awake or to even awaken the person. Slow, shallow breathing, eight minutes, uh, eight breaths per minute or less. What is a normal heart rate? That's 60. That goes to show you the heart start and the stop, folks. If that's not sure enough to wake you up, I don't know what is. If these things that I'm reading to you is not a wake-up call, the next step might be the last step for you. Passing out from alcohol intoxication could lead to death in two ways. Number one, you may fall asleep into a deep sleep. And you may never wake up because the alcohol concentration in your brain, excuse me, let me, I was reading from one to the other. Let me go back. You may fall into deep sleep, vomit, and choke because you are too intoxicated to wake up, otherwise known as the drowning system, uh, syndrome. You fall asleep and never wake up because the alcohol concentration in your brain is so high that your life functions are so depressed that they stop functioning at all, causing death for sure. What do you need to do when you notice somebody is intoxicated the first thing and it's not on my list this is coming straight from my heart is never ever give up on this person God doesn't give up on you don't you dare give up on this person continually monitor the person check their breathing waking them up often to make sure that they are not unconscious you energizing the body cells a little if they fall asleep place the intoxicated person on their back like this raise the person's arm closest to you straight above their head straighten the leg out Bend the other leg at the knee and bring the other arm across their chest. Then gently roll the person towards you and guard the head. Tilt the head to maintain airway, like this. Tuck the nearest hand under the cheek to help maintain head tilt. If they do not respond, call 911 immediately. The only thing that uh, can sober an intoxic person, intoxicated person is time. Only a sober adult should be responsible for the well-being of a drunk person. Go back to using the intelligent concept of being a role model. Don't let a child help a drunk person or, or uh, someone that's totally unconscious due to alcohol and or drugs. Don't. Use your head. Do not exercise the person. Do not allow the person to drive a car or ride a bike. Do not give the person food, liquid, medication, or drugs to sober them up. Do not give the person a cold shower. The shock of the cold water might cause them to go unconscious. And do not let the person uh, who has been drinking heavily sleep it off. It's a myth. Go sleep it off. Don't let them. Talk to them. The cold shower. Go take a cold shower is a myth. 
those are those uh, things not to do. If you didn't get a chance to write any of this down, go ahead and, and email me at clearreform, C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M, uh, at Yahoo, and I can supply you with this information. Uh, this information uh, came from the CDC, uh, and uh, it is available on the Internet. Folks, I don't even know how to say it any clearer than this, but we need to, as a community, start sharing whatever we have extra. We need, as a community, to start helping one another, and we need, as a community, never, ever to give up on each other. God never, ever, ever gives up on you. We are not God. We are human. But we can take 10% of what he will never, ever do, and that 10% siphon it to your neighbors, to your friends, to your loved ones. Don't give up. Don't. And when you're getting your slippers, your shoes, tomorrow morning, thank the Lord that this last breath, that I just took is not my last breath and these blinks that I'm taking is not my last blink because somewhere in this world just took their last breath as I'm talking right now and someone in this world just took to open their eyes for the last time and closed them for good and start sharing that's so important folks let the sunshine into your heart and into your home and you will get nothing but positive results. Eliminate the darkness or the ne negativity and you will get nothing but positive results. But continue to let, it, let the darkness and the negative people around you dictate to you and you will get nothing but negative results. Remember, a sober today guarantees you a better tomorrow. And if you believe what I'm telling you here, it will become clear out there. It will become crystal clear. Please, everybody, have a great weekend. But more importantly, have a sober weekend. And God bless you.